I'll be real with you, some calories didn't get recorded. But you didn't really fucking miss anything. All I did was weigh out our, or measure out another cup of the freaking carb master chocolate milk and have a drink before I went and showered and got my laundry going. So, final meal. Let's just uh, let's just look over the freaking whole day's macros. But final meal, a pack of uh, not just like the Maruchan kind of orange-looking ramen. Like that's fine, I like it, but a little more pricey. A little more pricey. Gotta get the Nissan Rao. That's where it's at. But let's get a little more specific. It's not just a bowl of ramen. It's seven grams of fat, sixty-six grams of carbs, eight grams of protein. That's in all the time that I've been dieting, and I've gotten pretty lean, I never really track. Like, I track everything, but I don't track the protein from non-dedicated protein sources. Like, you know, every time I eat those live... I'm looking at the, the name of it now. Live, live Carb Smart Bread. You know, the keto bread, whatever. I mean, it's... Like, it says three grams of protein, but I mean... Come on, let's be real. You're not going to get yoked eating fucking bread protein. Right, we need some meats, some dairy products, some fish, some eggs, things like that. So I'm not gonna count the eight grams from this. And then I plugged in the seven grams of fat, but this thing comes with a fucking little oil packet. I don't care for it, it kinda, it kinda has a weird taste. So even though I plugged in the seven, maybe, maybe that's all the seven grams of fat right there. But total for the day, the finale, once I finish this bowl, 249 grams of protein, 62 grams of fat, and 254 grams of carbs. So I guess I went slightly over the goal of 2,500, 2,570. Fuck. Not really. Come on. As long as you're bouncing around right there, one day of a little over, it's not going to hurt you. Now, if you got one day where you're way over, like, you know, I don't foresee it happening. But let's say I finish this bowl, I go to bed, and then I come back downstairs and I start just eating everything in sight. You know, I eat four, another 2,500 calories, cheat meal style. That's what I really call cheating on your diet when you have that fucking kind of a binge day. Then, you know, tomorrow, I'm probably gonna fucking weigh an extra, you know, two pounds, three pounds. Just because, you know, all those calories I just ate are gonna fill me back up. Because right now I'm in a very flat state. Like muscularly, you know, my intramuscular glycogen, it's relatively depleted. So for me to have one day to like just eat, I mean, honestly, just whatever I want, all that day is really going to do is, you know, fill up my glycogen stores. I'm not just going to turn all that food into fat, but then you have to get on track again. And for the next few days, you're going to gradually uh, deplete those glycogen stores until you're back at your you know, low level where you're actually burning fat. So, you know, one seriously bad day if you're trying to trim down every so often probably won't hurt you too bad. But when you have a couple days in a row, that shit's starting going to start to add up. Then you're really just making the opposite of progress. You're regressing, right? You're putting more fat tissue onto your frame. So not only do you have to be diligent about tracking your macros, you gotta stay on that calorie limit, at least such that the average calories that you had for the week is in your deficit level. Because let's think about this: I could do two days of 2,000 calories, but if I did, you know, another the next two days of like 6,000, then those two days didn't mean shit, you know, because it all balances out to like what does that balance out to? Like 4,500? I think we. I think we get the basic gist. Honestly, overall, I'm sure your impression of the diet is I'm eating and I'm just eating less. So there's tips and tricks to make it a bit easier to eat in the calorie deficit, like the little peanut butter sandwiches, the eggs with a sweet barbecue sauce on it with no, low sugar, you know, no sugar added. Um, I'm trying not to drink too many calories. The chocolate milk, I guess that's kind of a caveat, just because, yeah, well, I, I mean, I kind of feel full after I drink some of that chocolate milk. So it's not like I'm completely wasting away calories by drinking, you know, like a Sprite or something. So that's all I got, man. 
I already took the vitamins. I'm gonna go to bed after this, 2570. The pump was insane. Those are pretty much my three main goals for the day on the cut. So that's perfect. So I'll sit here, mess with this, and then I'll, uh, I'm not gonna record, obviously this is the end, but I'll, I'm thinking for breakfast, I got a top round steak. It's like, it said 0.8 ounces, so probably if I cook up the whole thing, it'll be about, I think, 70 grams of protein. I'll look it up and weigh it. Uh, I got, I'm gonna get a food scale tomorrow again, too. But I think I'll make some little steak sandwiches where, you know, cook up the steak, whatever, salt, pepper, avocado oil so it doesn't smoke up, and you get the deal. Cut it into kind of, you know, patty-ish shapes. Throw it onto those keto buns and a slap of American cheese. It's badass. That was my breakfast a couple days ago. So main point that I'm really trying to fucking, you know, drive into you, the viewer, is if you're trying to lose body fat, the only thing that's stopping you is whether or not you can eat in a calorie deficit. And I don't care what food you eat, you just have to be in a deficit to burn body fat. And if you want to gain weight, you have to eat in a surplus. Now, obviously, when you add, you know, bodybuilding, lifting, training, when you're dieting down, you're going to maintain some muscle. Well, not some muscle. You're going to maintain the muscle that you have in your frame. And when you're bulking up, you know, combining the lifting and the surplus, you should gain muscle. You'll gain a little bit of body fat. So when I look at that combination of circumstances, that's why doing like a big bulk and then a shortcut just makes sense to me. You know, I've been plotting my weight for the last like, you know, two years or so since I've been bulking. And it's like bulk up to here, cut down to here. And this is the starting level. So after that little bulk and cut, I'm heavier than I was before. I've got more muscle on my frame and I just repeat the process. Now, I've also main gained for even longer than that. Because in high school, you know, started off 160-ish. And I was just making sure to hit my protein and lift hard. I got up to like my heaviest weight in like high school when I was doing diving too. So I was on the diving team freshman year here. Um, I was about 200, but you know, lean, you know, I did one cut one summer. I was a pretty freaky 180. So a little bit of a little bit of details there. So again, 233 this morning. Uh, it's kind of late, so I may be slightly heavier tomorrow just because I may still have some of this in my system. But, you know, don't focus too much on the day-to-day -day weight changes. If you're tracking your stuff and you're trying to, you know, see a pattern, a uh, trend line. But week to week, you should definitely start to see something going on. And if you're not seeing any changes on the scale, then this is your issue. I can guarantee it. So, tomorrow I got a fucking ton of class, man. I better get some sleep. So, I almost came down and mailed this food. Almost forgot to freaking record it, you know? So, let's, uh, let's just break down the numbers first. And then we can describe a little bit more detail. So, just when I got up with cooking the eggs, I grabbed two slices of American cheese. This is a fucking snack. 8 grams of protein in, 8 of fat, 4 carbs, so 50 grams of protein worth of eggs, about 3 grams of fat when I added the olive oil, about 12 grams of carbs worth of low sugar, or no sugar added sweet baby rays, and then some of the Silo 9 for a little bit of hydration, because I'm fucking, I mean I just woke up dehydrated. So, and then I also added a little bit of uh, the clustered dextrin, so now that's at about 12 grams of carbs. And then two cups of the Carb Master low calorie chocolate milk, so that's going to add up to about 14 grams of carbs. No, no, wait, yeah, yeah, exactly. 14 grams of carbs and 11 grams of protein. So, all in all, breakfast, 70 grams of protein, 11 of fat, 42 of carbs. You know, that's about right. I don't want to just slam a bunch of carbs right when I wake up. You know, I'm not a massive um, 
It's not like I'm planning the meals out incredibly specifically, but I do want to have my carbs closer to the workout. I wouldn't want to just eat, a, you know, like two bagels, 100 grams of carbs, just to kind of, in a sense, burn it off when I do the cardio. Uh, and I don't mean like burning off, like as soon as I eat it, it'll just fucking disappear and nothing from the cardio. I'm saying I'll kind of feel nice and full from having that many carbs in my system. And I want to feel like that when I'm actually doing my weight training. The cardio, it's, it's whatever. I don't need that. I mean, honestly, sometimes I'll just do the cardio fasted just because, and then I can start eating later in the day. But I definitely want to start off with a little bit of protein. I mean, I just went all night without eating anything. So, coupled with this, a little cup full of all my freaking vitamins. That's pretty much all there is to it. So again, this one will look This whole day will look incredibly different than the last one, uh, purely because I'm trying to eat less calories. If I'm trying to eat a lot of calories and I want to eat calorie dense foods, like I guess bowls of what you know, whatever sweets, everything, because I'm trying to you know, I'm trying to change the scale. And now the same thing is true. I am trying to change the scale, but in the opposite fashion. So I'm trying to eat less food, and of course, eating less food, you're going to be freaking hungry. Right? So I want to try to eat foods that make me feel full, like make me feel satiated. They fill up my hunger bar and not go over that 2,500 calorie limit. But I'm not concerned with the source of the calories. Like just yesterday, I had two spicy chicken sandwiches from Wendy's as the meal like three hours or no, like two and a half hours before the workout. And I was talking to my one friend and he was like, oh, you're already having cheat meals? But I don't see it as a cheat meal. It's not like, <laughs> how am I cheating? At the end of the day, I still had my 2,500 calories. That's the amount of calories I'm trying to eat so I can lose body fat. And I was in my, you know, relative macro arrangement. Like I'm trying to get to 250 grams of protein, 50 grams of fat, and about 250, maybe I'll bounce around 250 and 300 grams of carbs. But as long as at the end of the day, you can hit the calories that you find as your calorie uh, deficit level, like you're gonna have to figure this out. It's kind of complicated, it's not very fun. I'll talk about it in a second. But if you can find out what your maintenance calories is, right, the amount of food you have to eat every day to just stay the same weight, then guess what? Drop it down from 500 calories from that and you actually stay at that level, then you're gonna start to see the scale change. Now, you can go online and look up like a maintenance calorie calculator, which you'll plug in your weight, your height, your um, your energy level, stuff like that. And it'll pump out a number like, oh, your maintenance calories as a 5 foot 11, 180 pound 18 year old is this. But it's, I mean, that's not totally accurate. That doesn't account for everything going on in your body. But that can get, that can be a good uh, you know a good starting point. But really, the best way to figure it out is just by taking like two weeks, eating as much food as you're hungry for, and weighing yourself every day. But I'm not just saying eat all your food; you have to track it as well. Because let's say you've been you've been the same weight for two weeks straight. If you tracked all the food that you ate over those two weeks. And if you were the same weight at the beginning and the same weight at the end, then if you average out that amount of calories, that's your maintenance. But of course, that's no fun because then you have to weigh yourself every morning and track all your calories. It, uh, I was just telling somebody at the gym who was talking about how he wanted to bulk up. And he said, well, you know, I'm hitting my, I'm hitting my protein, my gram of protein per day, and then I'm just kind of eating whatever. And I was like, all right, well, that's all fine and good. But if you actually want to gain weight, you've got to start tracking the macros and making sure that you're eating consistently at a level that's above your uh, your maintenance calories. You know, it's not a, um, that's all there is to it. Whenever I plateau in a bulk, it's just because I'm not eating enough food. And then vice versa, if I'm not losing weight, it's because I'm eating too much food. I'm inclined to believe my scale was kind of wonky these last couple of days, because it was like uh, 238 at the heaviest day. And that was coupled with raising the calories for a few days. 
But then this morning was 233, which I think is closer to about what I'm looking for. So by the end of this and maybe a month and a half ish, I'll probably be maybe two third, 230, maybe upper 220s. And then, I mean, I'm already starting to feel hungry. I'm, <laughs> I'm already itching to start the bulk again. But I kind of need this time as the, uh, the resensitization period. Plus, you know, who doesn't want to get lean once in a while? So, I'm going to go do my cardio after I finish all this. And then, I got to drive to the grocery store. I'm not going to do a, like a recording myself in the grocery <laughs> at Kroger with the cart in the, with the camera in the cart. That's kind of fucked. But I'll just go over some shit that I bought because I was home for the weekend and all my, my meats are bad and I ran out of all my keto bread. So, I think we're... Yeah, 543 calories in, in one meal. That sounds about right. So, I'm gonna go do my cardio and then we can skip to... What do you think? What do you think? Should I do the post-cardio pose down? Or should we just skip to the next meal plus the food I got at the grocery store? You decide. And then in three seconds you'll see if you're right. This is a this is a secret. This is a little secret. I haven't seen this before, but um, I'll like you enough. I'll tell you. I like you enough. I'll tell you about it. So basically, three of the little low carb buns. I'm not going to try to do the math right now. I'll do it before I go sit down and eat it. So three of these buns. This is a powdered peanut butter. So I mean one tablespoon like one little scoop of peanut butter like you'd spread on a sandwich. It's got like 16 grams of fat, dude. That is not nothing. <laughs> that is a considerable amount of calories. 16, that makes what? Nearly 150? 150 grams of cal... 150 grams of calories. 150 calories right there with just one little scoop of peanut butter? Not ideal, not very efficient. I mean, that's completely against the logic of you know, my style of dieting, which is trying to eat foods that are not calorie dense. So this powdered PB fit, this is a fucking go-to. So this is uh, the quarter cup, so the equivalent of four tablespoons. So that's two. So I'll do three servings of, is it three or? Yeah, I'll do three servings of this. <coughs> I, um, I left my food scale at home when I went home for the weekend. So I've got to do the next best thing, which is measuring it out, you know, by volume, which really is not, actually I'll do four servings, which is really not that, it's not as accurate, and also it's just more of a hassle, because you got to think, now I need to find my specific measuring cup, and like kind of balance it out so it's even, I mean, just no fun. Whereas if you have a scale, you know, and you can see how much weight a serving is, you kind of just pour out however much you want. But so that's four servings of the powdered peanut butter. And you're supposed to reconstitute it, right? Of course, it's powdered, but I'm not going to use water. I'll put some of the sugar-free syrup on there. And just because it says, just because it says, just because it says sugar-free does not mean that there's no calories. You gotta, you gotta read into the nutrition label a little bit closely. So, 30 milliliters. That's so two servings of this. It's going to be the equivalent of 10 calories. So. I'll just plug that in as two and a half grams of carbs. I'm not kidding when I say you gotta pretty much be OCD with this sort of stuff. You know, because if you let a lot of it just get, you know, lost, then you're not gonna be able to freaking make progress. At least not consistently, of course. You know, you gotta know exactly how much stuff is going into your body and then be able to see how that relates to your weight changing. So. Let's mix this up, and I think that should be just about enough for this to turn into kind of a normal consistency, but I guess I've got to look at the calories again. It's been a while since I've, you know, mixed some of this up, but this will just turn into some, you know, keto bread, powdered peanut butter sandwiches, and the, uh, so the only reason why I think to add that low sugar syrup is because the peanut butter itself, the powdered peanut butter, it's really not that sweet. Like, it's kind of, I don't want to say bitter, 
but when you mix it up with water, it's a little bit chalky. So, you know, I've kind of got a bit of a sweet tooth, right? As is, as has been shown by the bulk videos. So if I can have a little sweeter version, then that's perfect. So I'll just spread some of this onto here like so. And then I'll count a, it's gonna take me a second to add up all the macros, but we can go discuss some other topic while I sit here and chow down on these. I guess all I'm really missing now is some fucking zero sugar jam or something. I'm sure that's around. I was thinking this to myself, for the next bulk, I need to get some Uncrustables in the freezer. Just because those are so easy to eat. And what's what's one Uncrustable? It's gotta be at least 200 something calories. You know, I could just bring that with me to class or wherever else. And I mean, foods that you can eat easily on a bulk are probably the ones that you're gonna wanna prioritize. So, don't let this get dry either. If you let this sit and get dry, you're gonna have a problem trying to clean it out. So I'm not gonna clean it now, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it soak. So let's go sit down and see how these taste. I was talking about how I weigh everything because uh, today's the first day I came back from my actual like family's house for the weekend and I forgot the kitchen scale at home. So I didn't weigh anything today, but I did measure it out. I just had to use a little bit more of a roundabout method. So I already plugged in the macros of the sandwich, but now I'm gonna throw in two cups of this Carb Master chocolate milk. And luckily my shaker has little increments. So maybe it'll be 10 or so milliliters off. It's close enough. So two cups of this adds up to, let's do some quick math here. It's 14 grams of carbs and 22 grams of protein. So with this, my protein's almost maxed out. I've only got like 12 left. Maybe I'll have a little more later. I guess, I mean, I guess you'll see, but I've still got 330 calories left. So if you're concerned about the sourcing of the protein, because there was a considerable amount that just came from that, you know, the peanut butter powder. Uh, I was, I remember looking some stuff up about how like the, the protein in breads and the protein in peanuts sort of like combine. So when I was adding up all these macros, I just kind of count the, the bread proteins as negligible. So uh, sort of, I mean, it's, it's protein from bread. It's not a complete protein, but the bread plus the peanut butter, I think it kind of blends together. Uh, there's probably more research that could be done for me, but you know, whatever. I think the protein is still doing a little something in the system. Definitely enough to maintain the muscle I've built. So, oh, I just get to sit here and chill. You know, with all the driving, this kind of turned into, um, well, it's kind of morphed from a full day of eating just to a kind of a full day of everything, like a day in the life. I don't really have anything to do today, though. So it's not really the most interesting day in the life. Almo. Mm. Mm -hmm. One second. I'm sure when I do another one of these soonish, I'll do it on a day where I actually go to class and maybe I'll just like pack some stuff and sit in the study room because I've definitely got more meals than this at my disposal when I think about what I want to eat on a cut. Uh, a little bit <laughs> a little bit repetitive with those peanut butter sandwiches and then obviously a fucking Wendy's chicken, whatever. Not the most interesting method. But I'm serious. Macros, calories in, out, ca calories in, out, calories in, calories out. That is the method which is going to allow you to change the way your body looks more effective than anything else. You know, when people talk about, you know, I, you know, I can't lose weight. I'm naturally this is big boned. You can, we hear that a ton. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to hate. I'm literally just saying, uh, if you're the same weight for a continuous period of time. 
That just means you're eating at a calorie maintenance level. So if you want to lose weight, you got to eat less food or burn more energy throughout the day. So, you know, the way I look at it on a bulk and on a cut, I mean, the cut gets a little bit more, let's just say conventional. Like that breakfast, egg whites and barbecue sauce, that's pretty bodybuilder-esque. Um, honestly, that was the only meal I had like that. So, I mean, food's food. You know, I'm looking at a, you're looking at a Wendy's chicken, right? But through my eyes, like pretend to, you, you get what I'm saying, 50 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat, and 25 grams of protein. So, in terms of calories, this would be the same as if I were to eat 25 grams of carbs, no, no, 25 grams of protein worth of like cubed chicken with some, you know, buffalo sauce added onto it, let's say 15 grams of fat worth, and then 50 grams of rice on the side. You know, fucking whether it's 50 grams of protein from pasta or 50, no, no, 50 grams of carbs from pasta or 50 grams of carbs from like a pack of ramen, the energy inside of those fucking carbs is the same. So that's kind of been my outlook on the matter. And it definitely seems to allow me to change the way my body's composed, you know? But at the end of the day, that's the point. Like, on a bulk, obviously, if I felt like shit, then, and I thought that it was because I was eating so much, like, processed foods and sugars and whatever, then maybe I'd chill out on it. But if I'm feeling good, I'm feeling pumped, walking around and gaining some weight, that's all good for me. So, I, uh, let, let's save the end talk for the next meal, but I'm going to finish the sandwich, drink the little chocolate milk, put my clothes in the laundry. I told myself I was going to clean the kitchen today. I did not. Maybe tomorrow. But let's cut to the last meal and... This is almost the end, man. This was a fucking long one. Right, so let's mix up the pre. So, watermelon candy bloodshot. I, I won't lie, I feel like I was approaching the danger zone when I cut this little water bottle into a makeshift funnel. But I don't know what I did with the one I like. So, this will work. Well, it'll work perfectly. Honestly, I almost like this one more than the dedicated one I had before. This one actually seems to have a wider mouth. But one serving of the stim-free bloodshot. But of course I'm not a stim-free guy, so where's the... Ah, fuck. The watermelon candy blood hostilities at home. So watermelon and grape. It's both fruity. Good mix. So, I mean, I mean, let's be real. If they're, if they're both fruit-flavored, how weird can it be? So, so there we go. Pre-mixed up. I kind of want to... Like, there's still powder in here. Um, maybe I'm just being OCD, but I kind of want to get it all actually in. I'm sure, you know, the little bits that didn't actually make it won't change much. But, why well, leave it up to chance? So, the intro workout drink of the jug is just this zero sugar lemonade. Really, I just kind of want something sweet to drink with no calories. So, that's perfect. It gives me a pre jug and my intra jug. So, I will prepare a little bit of something for the post workout shake. Obviously, not as big as my you know, bulking post-workout shake. The one, so the one with the cluster dextrin and, um, the cluster dextrin and the pre-post-workout and a bulk, I mean, that's a 600 calorie shake just slammed instantly. Not even like as the post-workout meal, like I go home and eat something too. But on the cut, I still, you know, post-workout, I still want some easily digestible carbs and I still want some protein powder with some digestive enzymes. I mean, it really couldn't hurt you. But I also pack some food too. We'll get into that a little later. So I'm not going to count these macros right now. I'll, I'll talk about it when I actually, you know, eat it after the lift. 
Eh, fuck, I'll just, whatever. So that I'll bring it up again, but that's 25 grams of the cluster dextrin, so the equivalent of 25 grams of carbs. And then one scoop of the cookies and cream ISO H1. Very nice. I better add some ice into this too. I always regret not adding ice. The uh, the jug is cold because this was in the fridge before, so that's good. But a shake with ice. I don't want to say the word. I don't want to be crazy and say game changer. But at the same time, I sort of do. Ooh, you know it's actually pretty good. I wish I had a blender right now, or not a blender. What am I thinking of? Like a Nutra Bullet. Because you can do, you know, with two scoops of protein in, in there, whatever, with the water. I've never really been a big fan of mixing it with milk. But if you throw that with a bunch of ice into a Nutra Bullet and blend it up into more of like a, yeah, it just kind of ends up being like a smoothie. It's much better. That's what I got to get. For, by the time the next, I do another full day of eating, we'll have a little Nutra Bullet in here. Oh, that reminds me. Of, that reminds me of a little diet hack too. I'm not going to get into it today, but I'll save that for later. So, post, there we go. Yeah, let's line them up. Post workout, intro workout, pre workout. So let's uh, slam this and then get in the car and get over there. Talk about what we plan to do for arms. At the fucking footage from that pump, except for on the little like LCD screen on the camera, dude. That fucking back lat spread fucking veins just crawling across the uh oh you guys gave me some flack for this the terry's major i was calling that uh that muscle the rhomboids let's scoot all this fucking stuff over so post-workout meal in a bodybuilding deficit what the hell am i gonna eat well guess what i actually got something i didn't prepare it i went out and freaking got a hold of a foot long Turkey sandwich from Subway. I love this shit. So, 80 grams of carbs. It's it's not nothing at once, but you got to think I've only had like, you know, 90 for the whole day so far, and I've got 300 to play with. That's essentially how it uh, how it all adds up. So I'll, I'm not going to eat this all right now. I'm gonna I'm just kind of displaying it in a sense, but. You know, the bread itself, you, you gotta... Don't, I'm not just guessing, you know, I looked this shit up. How many carbs are in a fucking foot-long wheat Subway sandwich? 80-ish. That's about right, you know. You, you want to be exact with it, but you don't have to be, like, exactly exact. I guess that's kind of bad advice, but... So, 80 grams of carbs with the turkey, about 30 grams of protein. And then, with a little bit of mayonnaise, about 15 grams of fat... So I plug that all into the, you, go on the app store, look it up. Literally, these words exactly. Stupid, simple, macro tracker. It's fucking free. All you do is you open it up and you type in the amount of fat you just ate, the amount of protein, the amount of carbs, and it'll track it for your day. And you can set it to have limits so you can see how many you've eaten, how many you've got left. It's free. That's what I fucking use. That's what I recommend. And that's not a sponsored, statement either you know i think my fitness pal is kind of overly complicated so i gotta drink something too i tell you what i didn't realize i was such an addict old habits die hard i got two uh i got two is this a half gallon i think i get a gallon worth of chocolate milk but this isn't just fucking chocolate whole milk this is the carb master kroger brand non-fat milk would so the macros on this per a single cup zero grams of fat huge w seven grams of carbs i mean it's, it's it's a little something and then 11 grams of protein so two cups of this is only going to be 160 calories now again you know i say cups but i'm going to weigh it out you know anytime you're doing anything where you're trying to track shit just get a little fucking kitchen scale it's not too fucking complicated so if I want two cups, that's 240 milliliters. A milliliter is about a gram. So I'm gonna fill this shaker cup up until it says 480. Four, 
478, close enough. Then I'm going to open up the stupid simple macro tracker. 22 grams of protein and 14 grams of carbs. So post workout, it's about um, it's about 8:30 now, and I've only had two, including this food, which I have not yet eaten. I've had 2,000 calories, so I've still got a thousand to play with, which is very nice. Uh, I will say this: the uh, I didn't talk about this before. I kind of forgot about it. A three-pound jump in one day. What I think happened was I kind of I didn't get a ton of sleep last night, even though I gave a whole speech about how I need to fucking sleep more. I end up staying a little bit extra, staying up a little bit extra late. But I think I had some extra food in my stomach from the night before, which you know kind of added to a little bit of a false weight in the morning. But you know, even though it's I'm in a deficit, you know, I'm tracking my calories day by day. Your weight's gonna fluctuate. Like your water intake, sodium, you know, random shit like that. I also kind of think I just did quads really hard. Well, I did legs really hard yesterday, so maybe they were kind of inflamed and had a little bit of extra water in them. But there's really no need to read into your day-by-day -day weight change. It's just like, it's it, it doesn't matter. Now, you should begin to see a trend line week by week. If you're just staying the same week by week, and let's say you're trying to lose body fat, then you are not eating in a deficit, you're eating at a maintenance calorie level. Like if your weight's the same day one as day 20, and in your mind you're thinking that you're trying to eat in a deficit, then it's not a fucking issue of, oh, well my thyroid is this, that, and the other, or, you know, some people are just genetically pre... No, you're literally just eating too much food, or you're expending too little energy. Right? I mean, this is pretty basic shit, and uh, honestly, <laughs> From my perspective, and I think it's pretty factual, it's non-negotiable. And the same thing goes for gaining weight. Two weeks pass and you're on a quote-unquote bulk, and you're still the same fucking weight, you need to eat fucking more food. And I'm not telling you this as if I'm a fucking pro. Uh, I mean, the same thing goes for me. What'll happen is, uh, towards the end of my bulks, I always fucking stagnate. I need to get totally serious for the next one. Totally freaking serious. But that back pump was fucking solid. Even though I didn't even do any crazy heavy uh, rowing, I guess the pull downs on that first two sets were pretty heavy. And I mean, the 130s for the bent over rows were, they were pretty heavy too. Okay, I guess I lied. It was just a solid back day all around. So cardio in the morning. And then tomorrow is going to be an arm day. Yeah, fuck yeah. I've got something planned. I want to try something for an overhead tricep movement. I'm going to see if it works. I don't want to spoil it for you. I want to build suspense. But I'm going to finish this up. Shower off. I think I'm... I don't think I'm stinking. I haven't showered after the lift yet, but maybe I'm just nose blind. And then I've got no homework tonight. This is badass. I get to just eat this and chill. So ideally, ideally you would had an awesome lift and you did your cardio in the morning. We'll just leave it at that. But I'll fucking see you next time, goddammit. This is a lot of shit. I mean, this could have been a, t a whole video in and of itself, just the grocery haul. So I won't get into, well, I won't really, uh, blah, blah, blah. I won't really get into any details, but fucking, what is this, a pound of top round, pound of flank, you know, lean meats. I definitely prefer the steaks over the ground beef. I don't know, you're just kind of actually eating something. This will come into play later on tonight. Powdered peanut butter, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a teaser for that meal. Let's get the shit away. Fucking back to the Carb Master chocolate milk. Only 80 calories per cup instead of the normal, like almost 300. So I can still, uh, I can still get my fix. Some bottled egg whites. I mean, it's just way easier. And I'm, I'm reasonably certain it's more cost effective to buy the egg whites on their own rather than get whole eggs, crack them, and then do those whites. I mean, I feel like I prefer the egg whites when they're straight out of, uh, you know, straight out of the egg. 
But at the end of the day, it's the same macros. It's the same shit. Some carb smart hamburger buns. So let's think about this. What's the typical amount of carbs in a hamburger bun, would you say? If you know. Maybe 40? 30? Here we're looking at three with just a ton of dietary fiber making it up instead. So going for the low calorie options, if you can kind of, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Like integrate the low calorie shit, the zero calorie stuff into your day. I mean, even if you didn't change the way you eat and you just ate the same thing, but the low calorie version, it'll start to fucking add up. So again, sugar-free syrup, this will come into play with that powdered peanut butter. If you can, uh, if you can begin to imagine. And then I was just kind of thirsty. I got some fucking, some propels. The sucralose, I don't know. I hear worse things about sucralose than I do about aspartame, but I'm not hurt. I'm not insanely concerned. Where'd the, where'd the rest of my tuna go? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Like six packs of these little individually separated, uh, or not individual, what am I saying? Well, six packs of these flavored tuna. So, honey barbecue, that's my go-to. 15 grams of protein, four grams of carbs. Throw two of those on one of those low-cal buns. That's a badass tuna sandwich. And then, oh, a bunch of deli ham. 98% fat free. I think you're starting to notice a pattern, right? Everything kind of has a caveat. It's, uh, oh, we're getting into some shit about Zizek. It's like you want something, but you don't want its essence. It's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an obscure reference. Don't worry about it. Some things of zero calorie lemonade. Let's fucking just, any, anything you can fucking replace with the zero calorie version, I'd say that is the bread and butter of the technique of staying under your calorie maintenance level and staying in a deficit. So I don't want to spoil meal one. You're looking at it right here. Or no, no, no. Meal two. So I'm going to put all this shit away and then we can get into what I'm going to eat. Well, whatever. Close enough. So now it's actually a normal hour. It's only 7.30. But I've got some shit to do today. So to save time instead of actually driving to the gym to do my cardio, I get to use the fucking seated bike in the kitchen. This is badass. Saves me like 30 minutes total. Honestly, I mean, I kind of prefer just going to the gym just because I'll fucking run into people I know and get to chit-chat. But if I'm actually in a rush, or, I mean, let's say your gym's fucking 30 minutes away from your house, you know, when I rip on you for not doing your morning cardio, it's, you know... Sometimes it can be circumstantial. I mean, I wouldn't tell somebody who fucking is super busy that they have to drive, you know, a whole hour total in the morning. Just really scrunch up their routine. I mean, it can be fucking difficult to add. You know, lifting may not be like your main shit. But, you know, ideally, every morning, fasted or unfasted, it really, I couldn't care less. I'll do it fasted when I'm cutting just because I don't want to, you know, eat a bunch of food right now. I want to save it for at least a little bit later in the day. But having to see the bike at home or everybody's got a fucking treadmill in their basement or some shit. I'm not a human. I don't feel like I'm missing out by not doing the Stairmaster. I feel like the Stairmaster is just so fucking hard. Like, burning the fuck out of my glutes. Seated bike's the way to go for me. But some you guys have been putting me on to taking my vitamins in the morning. The logic was like, well, some of the some of the B vitamins can act as a as a what what st oh, they can have like a stimulating effect, so it'll make it harder to sleep. So whatever. I mean, I've been taking my vitamins at random fucking hours throughout the day. Like, let's say I forgot them last night. Maybe I take them at noon. Honestly, if you get them in sometime through in the day, I think you're fucking fine. But first thing I did was I fucking filled up the jug instant jump on the hydration so I'll take my vitamins I already took a uh, well I already dry scooped the creatine because that's kind of just a fucking hassle like why would you want to mix your creatine into water is whatever so vitamins plus a caffeine capsule 
I mean, this is the equivalent of my morning coffee, I guess. So basic plan for cardio is just fucking sit down, pedal, put it at a difficulty where it'll say that it burns 300 calories in half an hour. So the way you could gauge that is after one uh, or after 10 seconds, how many calories have you burned? So if you can kind of do the math, if you've only burned seven, you gotta up the intensity or pedal quicker. Let's say you burn 12, maybe you can drop it down a little. I'm not saying 300 calories in half an hour is the best method. That's just how I go about it. But I'll sit down for a fucking half hour, then we can jump ahead to the uh, to the pose down. I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna do it in here. Typically, I'm not doing too much posing in the kitchen. But whatever. Morning weight was 234.1. So we're kind of bouncing down. Uh, I saw a couple of comments that were like, well, what happened? Three days ago, you were 234, and then you were 236, and your weight's gonna fucking fluctuate day by day. You know, if you're, yeah, it's, there's no need to like, read too much into your day by day weight. I'd say you'd want to look at your week by week. You know, that'll probably be a good indicator of whether or not you're moving in one particular direction. But let's, I got shit to do, man. Let's get the cardio started. All right, so kitchen is only halfway to a complete mess, but weighed out 460 grams worth of egg whites out of the carton, straight into the pan. So you gotta think about this logically. I mean, it's not too fucking hard to understand. I, I, this, I, I, this is probably just pandering at this point, but 46 grams in a serving, five grams of protein per serving. If I want 50 grams of protein worth of egg whites, it means I got 10 servings, means I got 46 grams in a serving, 46 times 10, 460. So it can get a little tricky because like, eh, eh, well, I guess I could have just put the pan on the scale and done it. It's, if you, if you get a fucking kitchen scale, you're going to gradually get used to just weighing out all your shit. Honestly, I mean, I probably could have just estimated because the more that you track your shit, like, I mean, at this point, I, I'll always get these pieces of turkey breast at Costco literally five pounds worth and at this point I can pretty much cut it almost perfectly into slices where it's eight ounces per because that's about fucking 50 grams of protein so I'm gonna let this cook up and uh, we can cut to the final product plus the macros all right meal number one god damn it 50 grams of protein and 10 grams of carbs from some zero, sh no sugar added sweet baby rays. I mean, honestly, egg, you can put fucking whatever the hell you want on egg whites. Like, Terry, I've, I've been known to throw some mustard on from time to time. Obviously, not right now. But, I mean, it's just kind of a blank canvas. Now, whole eggs, like scrambled eggs, it's, I, I feel like an asshole saying I put mustard on my eggs, but I was about to say, it would be weird if you put ketchup on your eggs. Maybe I'm not in a position to judge, but I mean, so this brings up one point. Why would I eat this instead of just drinking a protein shake? You know, I don't, there, there's obviously a difference in the, in the foods. Like I'd rather eat like a steak or, or I'd rather have like red meat protein or, you know, fish, eggs, whatever, than, you know, like a protein shake. But the macros are there, you know, let's say I was in a rush, I could just drink 50 grams of protein worth of a protein shake and move on. It's just not filling, you know, the whole point for me right now is I'm trying to eat like normal meals, normal f amounts of food, get food into my system, actually kind of feel a little full, but not eat foods that are fucking like full of calories, right? I could eat, you know, maybe a bowl like this, but if it was whole eggs and then I did like maybe a... Like, let's say, like a, like a buffalo sauce, full fat. I mean, it's, yeah, if you got like a creamy buffalo, it's not fucking hard to get 20, 30 grams worth of fat and just in like a couple of spurts of the sauce. 
So uh, another point why you gotta fucking have that kitchen scale on your counter at all times. Because if you're trying to fucking lose calories, each meal, if you're not tracking those little bits of like extra whatever that you wouldn't really think about to catch, that shit can fucking add up. I mean, I guess you just have to find out for yourself. But, you know, every time I eat now, honestly, it's like I've got an OCD fucking compulsion. Instantly open up the stupid, simple macro tracker, plug in the macros, and go about my day. Now, if you're not doing that, I mean, I, I make this point every time I talk about tracking your macros. It's not super easy to start, you know, because you're going from just eating whatever the fuck you want, basically, to now... Every time you eat something, you either have to read the label, or look it up, or weigh it, or estimate it, or, I mean, it's just kind of a hassle to get started. But, if you want to actually make legit progress, you know, dieting is fucking a pretty key aspect of uh, converting random shit or whatever that you're eating into muscle after you stimulate it in the gym and recover when you're in bed. I mean, what, what kind of fucking shirts do you see everybody wearing? Eat, sleep, and gym? No, it's eat, sleep, lift. Those are like the classic funny-ass motivational shirts, whatever. So, if you're not on top of your diet, and you're also not satisfied with the sort of results you're getting in the gym, it's just a whole other fucking aspect that you could be putting a considerable amount of thought and effort into. And not pointlessly either. This shit can fucking absolutely flip the way that you look. Within, it depends on your current state, but honestly, like, within months. You know, let's say I was like, let's say after this bulk I didn't do my cardio, and I ate more food than I was already eating, and I got, like, fucking soft. Like, I, abs disappeared, like... Not like totally fat, overweight, but you get what I'm saying. Like, let's say I was really fucking soft. I mean, three months of going from that to just tracking my fucking calories every day and staying under specific limits. Yeah, I can go from fucking... It, it'd be unrecognizable. So, don't think that you cannot do the same in terms of manipulating the amount of body fat that you've got on your frame. So, I'm gonna eat this. Uh, I've got some sushi in the fridge. I'll probably finish off. I'm gonna track the macros, of course, and then I'll take the pre and get ready for arms. So, you'll see that video tomorrow, even though it was filmed today for me. But for you, today is yesterday. Who gives a fuck? Let me eat my fucking food, and then. Uh, fucking see for arms tomorrow is this no so the car cars in the shop I uh the guy fucking opened up my hood I don't know if anyone's aware but he was like the serpentine belt it's it's gone your whole pulley assembly your whole pulley assembly needs to be replaced so I'm like well how long is that gonna take Honestly, he said they might be done with it later today. So, that would be actually badass. I gotta drive back home for the weekend, so really I need it, like, ideally before Thursday night. Because today's Wednesday, but... I thought it was gonna be a whole problem with, like, the power steering pump. But no, it's fucking fine. So, a little bit of a glimpse into the behind the scenes of the pre-lift preparation. Because I don't just make the pre, you know, I've got... Well, I guess I do have the pre, and then I've got the little post-workout shake. And then I've got the intra-workout. So, since I'm going to the gym that's only two blocks away from where I live, I'm just going to drink all this pre. I'm doing the serving of the hostility and the bloodshot. So, one's, just, you know, stim-free. The other one has, like, 275 milligrams of caffeine. But in terms of the actual pump products, like I'd want to do more than less. I'd rather be on the upper end of effective than have less than I would need. And it seems to work pretty freaking well. 
I tell you what. But yeah, like I was saying, so since it's only one minute away from where I live, on, a, on the little electric bike, I'll just drink this in the kitchen. And then I'll fill this up with... Where the fuck is it? Oh shit. Hydration, goddammit. Silo 9. It's got aminos in it too. Like, say what you will, but I'm really here for the uh, some intro workout electrolytes. That's my whole shit with that. But basic plan for back. Honestly, I... I don't know. I don't want to do any bent over rows. That's for sure, because my hamstrings are like still destroyed from yesterday's leg day. So any kind of like, you know, if I want to do any kind of rowing, I'm going to want it to be chest supported. Because you got to think, if you're doing rows where you're bent over, or even cable rows seated, you're still using your fucking butt and your hamstrings to hold yourself up. And if my fucking hamstrings are thrashed, you know, I don't want to tire them out even more. So I'm thinking... Probably pull downs, rows, whatever. Yeah, you're totally good. So, one of the roommates is coming down. But yeah, probably pull downs, rows. Honestly, I've been liking dumbbell rows. But it gets a little annoying because I don't mind doing single sided movements for like, you know, arms or quads. Like, you know, I love single leg leg extensions. But I don't really feel the benefit of doing too much single arm stuff for back. I do like single arm rows, or no, no, single arm cable pull downs seated. Especially because, I mean, this it's going to be fucking packed in there. I already know it. So if it is, which I know it will be, I might not even be able to get onto a fucking uh, lap pull down machine. So you got to kind of make use with what you have access to. Make use of the... Uh, What's the word I'm trying to think of? The equipment at your disposal. Because let's say for whatever reason you've got pull downs on your mind. Right? You want to hit some pull downs, it's mid back. Let's say you started with a heavy rowing movement. By the time you fucking get to pull downs, if there's a line of three dudes and each one has at least three sets, how long is that going to take before it's your turn? I guess ideally you'd ask them to work in, but let's say they don't let you. It's probably 20 minutes. I mean, just sitting around for 20 minutes mid-workout, it's not going to be fucking ideal. Lose the pump, get out of the zone. Ugh, no good. So one scoop of the cookies and cream protein, and then 20 grams of the cluster dextrin. So, you know, easily digestible carb post-workout. I don't want to kind of replenish all the glycogen I just burned. But this is not even, like, sure, this is the same shake that I was drinking post-workout on the bulk, but on the bulk, it had 100 grams of cluster dextrin instead of just 20. So I want a little, but I, you know, I don't want a ton. If I've only got so many calories to work with for the diet, then I want to kind of use them sparingly. I don't want to just waste 100 by drinking it because that's not going to make me feel full at all. I'd rather have the 20 in the shake and then get home and have like a, I don't know, a pack of ramen or some rice or something, but I think I'll just slam this over the next couple of minutes and then we can cut to the first working set. <sighs> oh, I don't think I needed that much water. Probably did not need that much water. And then we're doing a little bit of a repeat. I just, <laughs> I just ended up making three more of those little peanut butter sandwiches with the syrup. So let me make sure I know what the macros are. I just added them all up. Uh, there we go. Yep. So in these little sandwiches with the keto bread, plus the shake with the cluster dextrin, 36 grams of carbs, 13 grams of fat, 45 grams of protein. So right now I'm at 191 of protein, 40 of fat, and 117 of carbs. So I've got when I get home, I get to eat kind of a hearty meal. I've still got a thousand calories left, but until then, I guess I'll just I can chill right here and slam these. So that pump was fucking diabolical. Like I was, whoa. And I'm as light as I've ever been for this 
well, for the, a considerable amount of time. I mean, 233. That is that is much less than 245, but the pump was still fucking gnarly. I'm sure I'll get tired of these eventually, but they're still hitting pretty hard. But yeah, I mean, I just had that fucking... I don't know. I didn't even drink, like, an insane amount of water today, either. Well, I don't know. I guess I did. I kind of... I filled up the jug with, like, a little electrolyte pack. And I made sure to drink, like, half of it. So, like, about a liter before the cardio. And then a full liter after. When you're cutting down your hydration... And that's not just water. I'm talking about water and electrolytes. That's definitely going to determine how good the lift is. Because, sure, I mean, I could come in here with, like... 500 calories total eaten so far in the day, but that one inherently mean I'm going to have a bad lift. If I'm like dehydrated, I've had no electrolytes, plus maybe I didn't get a ton of sleep, that's what's really going to, you know, affect my lift in a dieting context. But, you know, the food, I'm pretty much used to the 2,500 calories right now. But it also helps that, like I was saying before, I'm trying to eat foods that are very filling, but don't have, like, you know, well, they have less calories than I would imagine them to have, if you get what I'm saying, you know. I could eat the same little stack of sandwiches with peanut butter with the normal style bread and the normal peanut butter, and it would be 1,000 calories, but instead, 300. So... I'm sure the more of these I'll do, I'll add some other little tricks. Like I was kind of hinting at this before, I've got a pretty good little mix to make these protein powder pancakes. It's like, I forget the ratio. It's like two scoops of protein, two egg whites, some baking powder. You got to blend it. I forget the exact recipe. I had it down pretty good for a while. And those are pretty good. Honestly, fresh off the pan, it's not that unenjoyable. It's like pretty good. But... <laughs> But if you let it get cold, it just turns into kind of a rubbery. Uh, it's not. That's something you got to eat it right then. But you know, the more curious you are with your food, the more you'll be able to find little things and tips and whatever tricks that are going to work for you. Now, I won't lie. It kind of requires the prerequisite that you're into counting your calories, tracking everything. You got a food scale on the counter and you actually use it. That's the only thing that I've had. That's the only thing where I see like someone make a video about me and they said they didn't think I used my food scale. I took that one to heart. Dude, I use the food scale every day of my fucking life. At least when I have to use foods where I have to measure out the quantities. Because for, for prepackaged stuff, it's super easy. All you have to do is read it off the back of the label. You know, I'm sure it seems like a lot of work to count your calories, but it's honestly only a couple of seconds. And the better you get at it, or, well, let's just say the longer you do it, the better you'll get at it, and it's just going to become second nature. I mean, whether it's a blessing or a curse, I kind of feel weird eating food without tracking the macros now, you know? So, I'm not just going to sit here, I'm probably just going to go back and you know, talk to some guys I know down there while I finish these last two sandwiches. And then, let's cut to, I guess that we don't really need a car talk. Do you want one anyway? I, all right, okay. Let's get in the car. All right, my mic is near death. I may have to cut the clip short. Actually, no, I can just unplug, okay, we're good.